Welcome back, fellow seekers of the supernatural. Today, we're diving into the eerie world of paranormal investigations. From haunted houses to ghostly apparitions, these individuals have dedicated their lives to unraveling the mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. Join me as we count down the top 10 paranormal investigators in the world. Before we begin, remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our eerie explorations. Gaurav Tiwari was an Indian paranormal investigator, pilot, and founder of the Indian Paranormal Society. He was known for his passion for exploring the paranormal and investigating alleged haunted locations. Tragically, Gaurav Tiwari passed away in 2016 under circumstances that are still a subject of speculation. While his investigations were not as widely documented as some other cases, here are three cases associated with Gaurav Tiwari. Gaurav Tiwari conducted investigations at Dow Hill, a forested area in Kursiong, West Bengal, India. Dow Hill and the nearby Victoria Boys High School have been rumored to be haunted, with reports of eerie sounds, sightings, and feelings of unease. Tiwari visited the location to explore the reported paranormal phenomena and gather evidence. His investigations in Dow Hill contributed to the discourse about haunted places in India and added to his reputation as a dedicated paranormal investigator. The National Library in Kolkata, India is known for its historical significance and, according to some accounts, its paranormal activity. Gaurav Tiwari conducted investigations at the library to uncover any potential supernatural occurrences and document any evidence. Tiwari's investigations at the National Library aimed to shed light on the reports of ghostly encounters and to determine whether there were any genuine paranormal phenomena. His work was part of his broader efforts to investigate and share his findings with the public. Bangar Fort in Rajasthan, India, is often referred to as one of the most haunted places in the country. Gaurav Tiwari's interest in the paranormal led him to investigate the fort and its surrounding area to understand the stories of ghosts and supernatural occurrences. Tiwari's investigations at Bangar Fort were part of his larger mission to investigate and document India's haunted sites. While the fort's reputation as a haunted location has attracted tourists and paranormal enthusiasts, Tiwari aimed to approach the site with a critical and investigative perspective. Gaurav Tiwari's dedication to paranormal investigation and his contributions to the field in India were notable. His work helped spark conversations about the supernatural, paranormal research, and the exploration of allegedly haunted places in the country. His untimely passing was a loss to the paranormal community and left behind questions about his legacy and the circumstances surrounding his death. Chris Fleming is a paranormal investigator, psychic medium, and television personality known for his appearances on various paranormal reality TV shows. He has been involved in investigating haunted locations and communicating with spirits. Here are three notable cases associated with Chris Fleming. Chris Fleming gained recognition as the host of the paranormal reality TV show Dead Famous, which aired from 2004 to 2006. In the show, Fleming explored the lives and deaths of famous historical figures and visited locations associated with them to attempt to contact their spirits. Fleming's investigations often involved seances, psychic readings, and attempts to connect with the spirits of celebrities such as Marilyn Monroe, Harry Houdini, and others. The show blended elements of historical research, paranormal investigation, and psychic mediumship, creating a unique approach to exploring the supernatural. In the TV show, Ghost Hunters, Chris Fleming investigated the Myrtles Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana. The Myrtles Plantation is known for its history of hauntings and is considered one of the most haunted places in the United States. During his investigation at the Myrtles Plantation, Fleming attempted to communicate with the spirits believed to linger in the house. He used psychic abilities and tools associated with mediumship to contact the other side. 
The case added to his reputation as a psychic medium and investigator of haunted locations. Chris Fleming appeared on the TV show Psychic Kids, Children of the Paranormal as a mentor to children who claim to have psychic abilities. The show aimed to support and guide young individuals in understanding and managing their paranormal experiences. In the episodes he appeared in, Fleming worked with children who were grappling with their psychic gifts and helped them develop techniques to cope with their abilities. The show provided a platform for Fleming to share his insights and experiences as a psychic medium while assisting young individuals in navigating their own paranormal encounters. Chris Fleming's work often straddles the realms of paranormal investigation and psychic mediumship. His approach involves using his psychic abilities to connect with spirits and explore the unknown. While opinions about psychic abilities and mediumship vary, Fleming's appearances on television have contributed to the ongoing conversation about the intersection of the supernatural and human experiences. Lloyd Auerbach, known as Professor Paranormal, is a well-known parapsychologist, author, and investigator in the field of paranormal phenomena. He has been involved in investigating and researching various cases related to ghosts, hauntings, and psychic experiences. Here are three cases associated with Lloyd Auerbach. The Moss Beach Distillery, located in Moss Beach, California, is a historic restaurant known for its stunning ocean views and alleged paranormal activity. Auerbach conducted investigations at the distillery and documented reported hauntings, including encounters with the ghostly apparition of a woman in a blue dress. Auerbach's investigations at the Moss Beach Distillery were part of his work to explore and document instances of reported paranormal phenomena. His findings and insights into the alleged hauntings contributed to the location's reputation as a site of potential supernatural activity. The Queen Mary is a retired ocean liner that is permanently docked in Long Beach, California. It is known for its rich history and numerous reports of hauntings and ghostly encounters. Lloyd Auerbach has been involved in investigating the paranormal claims associated with the ship. Auerbach conducted investigations on the Queen Mary, using various research methods and tools to explore the reported phenomena. His involvement contributed to the ongoing discussion about the possible presence of spirits on the ship and added to the body of knowledge about haunted maritime locations. The Zalud House, located in Porterville, California, is a historic mansion that has been the subject of paranormal claims. Lloyd Auerbach has conducted investigations at the house, exploring reports of ghostly activity, strange occurrences, and psychic experiences. Auerbach's investigations at the Zalud House were aimed at collecting evidence and understanding the nature of the reported phenomena. His work in this case, like in others, highlighted his approach of applying scientific principles to paranormal research and his dedication to exploring the unexplained. Lloyd Auerbach's career as a parapsychologist and investigator has spanned decades, and he has been involved in numerous cases exploring the mysteries of the paranormal. Through his investigations, research, and writing, he has contributed to the field's understanding of supernatural phenomena and the experiences people report encountering in allegedly haunted locations. Amy Bruni is best known for her work on the TV show Ghost Hunters, where she investigated a wide range of reportedly haunted locations. While she has been involved in numerous cases, here are three notable cases from her time on the show. In Season 8 of Ghost Hunters, Amy Bruni and the team visited Rolling Hills Asylum in East Bethany, New York. The location was a former poorhouse and asylum with a history of tragedy and reported paranormal activity. Bruni and the team conducted investigations throughout the sprawling property, exploring its dark history and the claims of ghostly encounters. During the investigation, the team captured various audio and visual anomalies, including EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, and unexplained shadows. The episode highlighted the challenges of investigating large and complex locations and showcased Bruni's dedication to uncovering evidence of the paranormal. In Season 9 of Ghost Hunters, Amy Bruni and the team visited Fort Stanton, 
a historic military fort in New Mexico, and is rumored to be haunted by the spirits of soldiers, medical personnel, and others who once inhabited the site. During the investigation, Bruni and the team explored various buildings within the fort, including the hospital and barracks. They used a combination of traditional investigative techniques and modern equipment to try to capture evidence of paranormal activity. The episode at Fort Stanton highlighted the challenges of investigating locations with complex histories and multiple reported hauntings. Another notable investigation involving Amy Bruni was at the Spalding Inn in Whitefield, New Hampshire, during Season 8 of Ghost Hunters. The inn is known for its historical charm and reported paranormal occurrences. Bruni and the team explored the inn's various rooms and corridors, attempting to connect with any spirits that might be lingering there. During the investigation, the team experienced instances of strange noises and claimed to capture EVPs and other evidence. The episode emphasized the importance of historical research in understanding the potential sources of paranormal activity and showcased Bruni's collaboration with her fellow investigators to uncover the truth behind the reported hauntings. Amy Bruni's investigations on ghost hunters were characterized by her dedication to exploring the unknown, her ability to connect with witnesses, and her commitment to using both scientific and intuitive approaches to paranormal research. While some episodes focused on specific cases, Bruni's overall contribution to the show was in line with its mission to investigate and document evidence of the supernatural. Ryan Buell is a paranormal investigator and television personality known for his role as the founder of the Paranormal Research Society, PRS, and as the host of the TV show Paranormal State. While he gained prominence through his investigations on the show, he has faced personal and legal challenges that have impacted his public image. Here are three cases associated with Ryan Buell during his time on Paranormal State. In Season 1 of Paranormal State, the team investigated a case known as The Devil in Syracuse. The case involved a woman named Nancy, who claimed to be experiencing demonic possession. The team, including Ryan Buell, conducted an investigation to determine whether Nancy was indeed under the influence of a malevolent entity. The episode gained attention for its intense and dramatic portrayal of the alleged possession and the team's efforts to assist Nancy. However, in subsequent years, doubts were raised about the authenticity of the case. Some critics suggested that the case may have been exaggerated for dramatic effect, and Ryan Buell himself later admitted that certain elements were embellished for television. One of the well-known investigations conducted by Ryan Buell and the PRS team on Paranormal State was their exploration of the West Virginia Penitentiary in Moundsville, West Virginia. The penitentiary, which operated from the late 1800s to 1995, has a history of violence, death, and alleged paranormal activity. During the investigation, the team claimed to experience unsettling encounters and captured various instances of purported paranormal phenomena. The episode at the West Virginia Penitentiary showcased the team's approach to investigating haunted locations and their use of psychic mediums and advanced equipment. In another episode of Paranormal State, Ryan Buell and the PRS team investigated the Powell House, a historic home in Natchez, Mississippi, that was rumored to be haunted. The case centered around a family who claimed to be experiencing disturbing paranormal activity, including apparitions and unexplained noises. The team's investigation at the Powell House aimed to uncover the source of the alleged hauntings and aid the family. The episode delved into the history of the house and the reported experiences of the family members. As with many cases on the show, the episode aimed to blend investigation with elements of drama and storytelling. It's important to note that the authenticity of the cases and investigations featured on Paranormal State has been a subject of debate. While the show gained a following and introduced viewers to the world of paranormal investigation, Critics have raised concerns about the balance between entertainment and genuine research. Additionally, Ryan Buell's personal struggles and legal issues have impacted his reputation and credibility in recent years.
Hans Holzer was an Austrian-American paranormal researcher, author, and investigator known for his extensive work in the field of parapsychology and his investigations into haunted locations and psychic phenomena. Here are three famous cases associated with Hans Holzer. Hans Holzer conducted one of the earliest investigations into the infamous Amityville House in Amityville, New York. In the aftermath of the DeFeo family murders, the Lutz family moved into the house and reported experiencing disturbing paranormal activity. Holzer was one of the first researchers to examine the case and conducted interviews with the Lutz family and other witnesses. Holzer's investigation and his subsequent book, Murder in Amityville, provided an early and in-depth look at the reported hauntings. His work laid the foundation for the later investigations and media coverage surrounding the Amityville horror story. It's worth noting that the case's authenticity has been heavily debated, and Holzer's involvement played a significant role in popularizing the story. Hans Holzer investigated the Whaley House, a historic residence located in San Diego, California, that is rumored to be haunted. The house has a history of tragedy, including the execution of a criminal named James Yankee Jim Robinson on the property. The Whaley House has been the subject of numerous paranormal claims over the years. Holzer's investigation and subsequent book, Ghosts of Old San Diego, delved into the history of the house and the reported hauntings. He conducted interviews with witnesses and examined evidence of paranormal phenomena. The Whaley House remains a popular destination for those interested in the paranormal, and Holzer's work contributed to its reputation as a haunted location. Hans Holzer also investigated the Winchester Mystery House, an elaborate mansion located in San Jose, California, that is known for its architectural oddities and reported paranormal activity. The house was built by Sarah Winchester, the widow of William Wirt Winchester, the treasurer of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Holzer's investigation of the Winchester Mystery House explored the legend that Sarah Winchester believed the house was haunted by the spirits of those killed by Winchester rifles, and that she continuously constructed and renovated the house to appease these spirits. His work contributed to the mythology surrounding the house and its supposed hauntings. While Hans Holzer's investigations have been influential in shaping the modern paranormal field, it's important to note that his methods and findings have been met with both admiration and criticism. Some view his work as groundbreaking, while others question the rigor and credibility of his research. As with many cases in the paranormal realm, opinions about the authenticity of the reported phenomena vary widely. John Zaffis is a paranormal investigator and demonologist known for his involvement in investigating cases involving hauntings, possessions, and other supernatural phenomena. He is also the nephew of famous paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Here are three cases that John Zaffis has been associated with. John Zaffis was involved in investigating the case that inspired the movie The Haunting in Connecticut. The Snedeker family claimed to have experienced disturbing paranormal activity after moving into a former funeral home in Southington, Connecticut. The family reported seeing apparitions, experiencing strange odors, and witnessing other eerie phenomena. Zaffis, along with other investigators, looked into the claims and attempted to determine the source of the alleged haunting. The case garnered attention due to its chilling details and the family's reported experiences. While the events portrayed in the movie were dramatized, the case remains a notable part of Zaffis's portfolio. John Zaffis was also involved in investigating the case that inspired the movie A Haunting in Georgia. The Wyrick family claimed to have experienced supernatural occurrences in their home in Ellerslie, Georgia. The family's daughter, Heidi, reportedly communicated with the spirit of a girl named Emily through dreams and conversations. Zaffis and his team conducted an investigation to assess the claims of the Wyrick family and to determine whether there was evidence of paranormal activity. The case, which included elements of alleged psychic communication and interactions with spirits, 
added to Zaphis' reputation as a paranormal investigator. While the Annabelle Dahl case is more closely associated with Ed and Lorraine Warren, John Zaffis has also been involved in handling the doll and investigating its alleged supernatural properties. The Annabelle doll is a supposedly haunted Raggedy Ann doll that is said to have been the vessel for a malevolent spirit. Zaffis has been responsible for safely storing the Annabelle doll in a special case at the Warren's Occult Museum, which he curated after Lorraine Warren's passing. The doll's story and the alleged dangers it posed have been widely discussed in the paranormal community, and Zaphis's role in preserving and investigating this infamous object is well known. It's important to note that opinions about the authenticity of the cases John Zaphis has been associated with vary. While some believe in the paranormal nature of the reported events, others are more skeptical and attribute the experiences to psychological factors or other explanations. Zach Bagans is a paranormal investigator and television personality best known for his role as the lead investigator on the TV show Ghost Adventures. He has been involved in numerous investigations of purported haunted locations. Here are three of his famous cases from the show. In season one of Ghost Adventures, Zach Bagans and his team investigated Bobby Mackey's Music World, a nightclub located in Wilder, Kentucky. The location was rumored to be haunted and associated with dark, paranormal occurrences. The nightclub's history included tales of violence, crime, and alleged connections to the occult. During the investigation, the team claimed to experience a series of unsettling and paranormal events, including strange voices, physical sensations, and audio and visual anomalies. The case gained attention for its focus on the alleged demonic presence and the eerie atmosphere of the nightclub. The episode at Bobby Mackey's Music World became one of the early highlights of Ghost Adventures. In Season 4, Zach Bagans and his team investigated the Villisca Axe Murder House in Villisca, Iowa. The house was the site of a gruesome and unsolved murder that occurred in 1912, where an entire family and two guests were bludgeoned to death with an axe. During the investigation, the team conducted various experiments and used paranormal equipment to try to communicate with the spirits believed to be haunting the house. The episode explored the tragic history of the house and the reported paranormal activity, adding to the show's reputation for investigating historical and notorious locations. The Ancient Ram Inn, located in Watton, Underedge, Gloucestershire, England, was the focus of an episode in Season 5 of ghost adventures. The inn is known for its long history, tales of witchcraft, and alleged dark energies. It's often considered one of the most haunted locations in the United Kingdom. During the investigation, Zach Bagans and his team explored the inn's history and the various claims of paranormal activity associated with the site. They encountered strange sounds, apparitions, and reported feeling intense negative energies. The episode highlighted the inn's eerie atmosphere and the team's efforts to document the alleged supernatural occurrences. It's important to note that Ghost Adventures has faced both praise and criticism for its approach to investigating the paranormal. Some viewers appreciate its dramatic and immersive style, while others question the authenticity of the experiences and the methods used by the team. Regardless of these opinions, Zach Bagans and his show have undoubtedly left a mark on paranormal entertainment and investigation. Harry Price was a British psychic researcher and writer known for his investigations into paranormal and supernatural phenomena. He is best known for his involvement in various famous cases that captured public attention. Here are three of his most famous cases. Borley Rectory was often referred to as the most haunted house in England. In 1929, Price began investigating the paranormal activity reported at this rectory located in the village of Borley, Essex. He conducted thorough investigations, including seances and the use of various recording equipment. Price claimed to have captured photographs of ghostly apparitions and recorded mysterious sounds. 
Price's investigations at Borley Rectory led to the publication of his book, The Most Haunted House in England, in 1940. While some people believed in the authenticity of the hauntings, others were skeptical of Price's methods and findings. After Price's death, the authenticity of some of the evidence he presented came into question, and it was suggested that he might have fabricated or exaggerated certain aspects of the case. Harry Price claimed to have attended a private seance in which a small six-year-old girl named Rosalie appeared as a spirit. During the seance, Price took precautions to ensure that the room was secure. He sprinkled starch powder on the floor to detect any footprints, locked the door, and taped the windows. His intention was to rule out any possibility of fraud or deception during the seance. According to Price, a small girl spirit emerged during the seance, spoke, and even had her pulse taken by him. However, Price became suspicious because the supposed spirit of the child seemed very human-like. After the seance had concluded, Price found that the starch powder on the floor remained undisturbed, and none of the seals on the windows had been broken. This led him to believe that no one had entered or exited the room through the door or windows during the seance. Perhaps one of the most bizarre cases investigated by Harry Price was the alleged presence of a talking mongoose named Geff on the Isle of Man. In 1931, the Irving family claimed that their farmhouse was inhabited by a creature that could speak and communicate with them. The creature, Geff, claimed to be a mongoose born in Delhi and exhibited various paranormal abilities. Price visited the Irving family and conducted a series of investigations. He set up recording equipment and documented the alleged interactions with Jeff. Price remained skeptical throughout the investigation and believed that the case might involve trickery or psychological factors. In the end, he couldn't conclusively prove or disprove the existence of Jeff. The case remains controversial and is often cited as an example of a bizarre and unexplained paranormal claim. It's important to note that while Price gained fame for his investigations, his methods and findings were often criticized by skeptics and fellow researchers. Some accused him of being too credulous and not applying rigorous scientific scrutiny to his cases. As a result, his legacy is one of both fascination and controversy in the world of paranormal research. Ed and Lorraine Warren were American paranormal investigators and authors known for their involvement in a wide range of supernatural and occult cases. They gained significant recognition through their investigations and the books, lectures, and movies based on their experiences. Here are three of their most famous cases. One of the Warrens' most famous and controversial cases was the investigation of the Lutz family's experience in the Amityville house in Amityville, New York. In 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. murdered six members of his family in the house, and the Lutz family moved in a year later. The Lutzes claimed to have experienced intense paranormal activity, including strange odors, cold spots, and even physical manifestations like green slime oozing from walls. The Warrens were called in to investigate the alleged haunting. They conducted several seances and claimed to have documented evidence of malevolent spirits in the house. The case gained widespread attention and inspired the book The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson, which was later adapted into a series of movies. However, the validity of the Lutz family's claims has been widely debated, and some critics have suggested that the haunting was a hoax or exaggerated for profit. The Perron family haunting is another well-known case that inspired the movie The Conjuring. In the 1970s, the Perron family, led by Roger and Carolyn Perron, reported experiencing supernatural occurrences in their Rhode Island farmhouse. They claimed to have encountered apparitions, unexplained noises, and physical disturbances. The Warrens were called in to investigate the case. They believed that the Perron family was indeed experiencing paranormal activity, and they conducted seances and attempted to cleanse the house of negative energies. The case became the basis for the movie The Conjuring, which portrayed the Warrens' involvement in the investigation. The movie's success further cemented the Warrens' reputation as paranormal investigators. 
The Enfield Poltergeist case took place in a council house in Enfield, London, in the late 1970s. The Hodgson family, particularly the two daughters, Janet and Margaret, claimed to be experiencing a series of disturbing and unexplained phenomena. This included levitation, furniture moving on its own, and strange knocking sounds. The Warrens were invited to investigate the case alongside other researchers. They spent some time with the family, conducted investigations, and claimed to have witnessed supernatural events. The case gained significant media attention and was the subject of documentaries and books. However, skeptics raised doubts about the validity of the claims, suggesting that some of the phenomena might have been faked or exaggerated for attention. It's worth noting that while the Warrens' cases have captured the public's imagination and inspired numerous books and movies, their methods and findings have also faced criticism from skeptics and fellow researchers in the paranormal field. Some have accused them of sensationalism and lacking scientific rigor in their investigations. As a result, opinions about the veracity of their claims remain divided. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to drop a comment below, letting us know which topic or case you'd like to explore next. Your feedback helps shape the content you want to see. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.